Hi, this is the first session of a series of lectures on compactness. You will find if you compare this lecture with the standard textbooks on your le the lectures by your teachers, you will find this lecture to be a little bit unusual. Okay, this is just to show you what compactness is about, how to get at it why such a definition was arrived at okay so later as usual we will make a after defining compactness we will look at uh, our standard list of spaces and then see which are the more open not open etc etc right okay so let us get started yeah this is my youtube channel please subscribe to that and if you find some students, your juniors, seniors, your friends who are interested in learning mathematics, not for any exam purpose, but they really want to understand what is mathematics about, how to think mathematics, please suggest this channel to them. And if you have any kind of queries and requests for certain topics to be dealt with, you can send it to my email ID here. and this is the title compactness one and you have my email id the references are and an outline of a course which i gave at many places on topology one semester course okay an outline that is available for download from here and of course very concrete examples etc in the context of metric spaces you will find in this book topology of metric spaces Suppose I have a topological space X tau and F is a continuous real valued function where here whenever you write R remember our convention is with the usual topology alright now if you have seen my real analysis course and even other things you know that any continuous function is locally bounded continuous real value function locally bounded on x what is the meaning okay we have to give a definition let's give a meaning what when i say a function f is locally bounded i say for all x and x there exists a ux and open neighborhood of x so that f of ux is a bounded subset what is the definition clear so you give me any x if you want a picture and this is my x this is my r then there is a ux okay and this will be f of ux this will be something it will be bounded somewhere it it will be a subset of this but it has to be bounded okay right so when when do you say sub subset of r is bounded there are two versions either there exists m greater than zero so that for all x and a mod x is less than equal to a okay this one and similarly one can say up bounded above bounded below and hence let's not worry about okay you see that I have to repeat all these things because many people do not learn mathematics for its own sake they learn for exam so only theorem something something half memory half your understanding then somehow you get grade so please understand the thing so that uh, it will be easier anyway let's come back okay. so if it's a continuous function okay then I want to say it's locally bounded so why does it happen so you give me an X in capital X okay then let's look at FX right then let's look at any in epsilon interval let me say epsilon equal to 1 FX plus 1 okay now this is an open set right containing F of X this is an open set of R right now let let us look at ux to be f inverse of v 
that is set of all a set of all z in x so that the z belong to v notice that x belong to x yeah and since uh, f is continuous u is open this follows it is open right therefore u x is an open neighborhood of of x and capital X next notice that for any t in the interval f x minus 1 to f x plus 1 okay I have an estimate okay what is that this is same as saying mod f x minus t is less than 1 okay this implies okay mod t equal to mod f let's say t minus fx plus fx that is less than equal to mod t minus fx plus mod fx by triangle and equality right and this is less than one this is fx this is a constant because x is fixed right therefore for all t here mod t is less than one plus mod x you understand that for every t in the interval fx minus 1 fx plus 1 mod t is less than 1 plus mod fx now you start with any z in ux then what i know is fz has to be in this interval fx minus 1 fx plus 1 therefore i have mod fz is less than or equal to 1 plus mod fx right notice that if i let m or mx to be this constant 1 plus mo modulus fx then for all z in ux i have mod fz is less than or equal to 1 plus or mx hence f is bounded on ux but this is true for all x therefore for every x in x okay f is bounded on some open set therefore we have there exists an mx and a ux okay an open neighborhood so that f is bounded on ux this implies f is locally bounded okay pause review proceed So uh, what I have shown is given any continuous real valued function on a topological space it is locally bounded that means for each x there is an open neighborhood ux so that on U ux f is bounded by some constant but this constant will vary from x to x okay that is why you do not be MX, right now you can ask the next question huh? when can such an f that is a continuous function f from x to r be bounded you understand the question what i want is i want to know whether there is an m positive so that for all x and capital x mod fx is less than equal to m yeah now let us do that so let us draw a picture so that the picture will help you to understand this is my x okay these are my ux perhaps okay these are all my uxs and each one other is bounded by mx therefore what i have is my x is union of ux as x varies over capital X and each ux is f is bounded by some m, mx right so are you following so now suppose my x okay there exists finitely many many x1 x2 xn so that my x is actually union of ux i i equal to 1 to n
right then what happens let m i be equal to m of x i and let m equal to maximum of m i then what do you find you give me any x in capital x then this x has to be in capital x which is union of u x i right i equal to 1 to n okay right therefore there exists i in 1 to n so that x belong to u x i this implies there is i in 1 to n so that my mod f x is less than equal to mi right you understand right but in particular what happens therefore for each x and x i see that mod fx will be less than equal to some mi but that mi is always less than equal to m therefore i get f is going to be bounded do you understand this so when how did we achieve this that is what you have to reflect upon okay try to learn to think rather than just you know accept it mass is not a passive thing you should be active okay so so how did you achieve this see i had a collection of open set ux as x varies or something so that x is going to be union of uxi ux as x in capital x right from this i was able to find okay i was able to assert rather okay assert the existence of a finite number of points x1 x2 xn so that x is union of u x i right then on each u x i f is bounded by m i and if m is the maximum m1 m2 m1 mn then mod f x is going to be less than equal to m you understand so this motivates okay the concept of open cover and compactness so let us come to the first definition let x tau be a topological space okay so let uh, i be an indexing set okay and let us i say a collection i going to ui this is i to the power uh, the topology of x okay assume there is a function let's call it gives this collection ui i in i okay therefore this is an indexed family of open set right i said this okay i say this collection ui i in i is an open cover x if two things each ui i am just saying again for for definite clarity sake if for each ui ui is is an open subset subset of x and two x is union of ui i in i what does that mean that is for each x in capital x there is an i in capital i so that x belong to ui that's the definition of union right so then such a thing is called an open cover all right okay now let's look at see if you want to learn to use compactness using this notion you should learn how to generate open covers okay how are you following so let us look at just let, let's take a break okay how to generate
okay let's start with the simplest case r with the usual topology okay how do i generate open covers there are a lot of ways what are the open sets the simplest open sets are open intervals as we know therefore i want an open cover so that r must be union of ui right so i can write for each n un to be minus n to plus n right therefore i know union un is subset of r and given any x in x okay by argumentation property okay see mod x is not an upper bound for natural number therefore there is an n said that mod x is less than n that is it. n is greater than mod x that means x belong to minus n to plus n therefore this is an open cover all right and i can generate lot more such open covers okay for any r in q plus positive rations i can i can also do that how do i do that let us look at minus r to r call this as ur okay and then again by density of rations okay this collection ur as r varies over q plus this an open cover over okay how do i know that okay note that this collection un the first collection un in in n is a subset of ur or in r plus therefore this is obvious okay the, this union is already equal to r therefore this union will contain this union and hence it can, it must be equal to r all right okay yeah now suppose let us look at an example another example suppose i have rn or generally any metric space xd okay and suppose i give an epsilon positive can you generate an open cover what are the simplest open sets in a metric space and i also have given epsilon right open walls so where do i use epsilon naturally for radius therefore i can look at this collection bx epsilon as x varies over capital x this is again an open cover x yeah because give me any x then x belong to bx epsilon therefore union bx epsilon will be x is that clear or this is true for any epsilon fix an epsilon i have that yeah okay let us look at a third example okay let's suppose i have a function yeah from x to r this is a topological space and this is a continuous function okay right so i give again an epsilon positive okay how to generate an open cover for x now so i so this notice that it has to use the data what is the data x is a topological space f is a continuous function epsilon is positive and the codomain is r this data should be used right how will i use that what i can do is for every alpha in r let us look at u alpha the interval alpha minus epsilon to alpha plus epsilon call it v alpha okay this is an open subset of r f is continuous therefore if i look at f inverse of v alpha call u alpha to be this this will be open yeah right now i claim this collection u alpha as alpha varies over r is an open cover next how do i do that 
so that is I have to check whether union u alpha whether it is equal to x so let x this is obvious therefore I have to prove the converse right let x belong to this now let's look at fx right yeah then I want what do I prove I want to prove there is an alpha in R so that fx belong to u alpha this is what I want to prove can you can you find out what should be your u alpha <laughs> take alpha equal to fx itself then I have fx fx minus epsilon fx plus epsilon that's my v alpha therefore f inverse of this v alpha this will contain x but that's your u alpha okay pause review proceed so we can generalize the last example can somebody think of how to generalize that how did I get at u alpha to get u alpha what I looked at was v alpha we are all first what they are open subsets of r now just notice that in the second one of the examples in the metric space given epsilon I showed how to generate an open cover do you see this now do you see that here what I did was exactly that given any alpha in r that's open cover I had so how to generalize okay so let f from x to y be continuous and assume v alpha alpha in some indexing set or vi vi is, is an open cover of what can you guess of y very good right now how will i define u alpha now the same way f inverse of u alpha Correct. then this because this is continuous these are all open and u alpha is an open cover sorry I, I'm writing alpha just because the last case I'm writing u y equal to f inverse of v i therefore collection u i i in i is an open cover Now you see that given the data we are generating open cover that is the thing you have to learn because you will see when you go through compactness various results and proof you the assumption will be something is compact then you have to exploit the compactness if I want to exploit the compactness somehow I have to generate an open cover and extract okay do something whatever it is okay so you are you have to learn how to work with open covers okay how to create open covers okay let us look at another example suppose x tau is a Hausdorff space ok let us assume x has at least two elements can we generate an open cover I heard now the hypothesis of Hausdorff so somehow I have to make use of that And I also gave gave you that x has at least two elements. How will you make use of that? So let P not equal to Q be elements of capital X. Right? Now since it's Hausdorff, what do I know? Each singleton is closed. Therefore, let me define U1 to be X minus P and U2 to be X minus Q. So then u1 is open, u2 is also open because this is closed set. Singletons are closed set. Then notice that q contains u1 and sorry, q lies in u1 and p lies in u2. Okay. And all other points other than any x which is not p, which is not q, will always lie in u1 as well as u2. Therefore, I get x is union of u. Okay. U1, union u2 that is I have u1 u2 
is a cover is an open cover is it okay good so pause review proceed so i am going now going to make a definition of comma let text how be a topological space let okay i we say that x is compact you if u i i in i is an open cover x then there exists a finite subset f of i okay this is a finite set so that my x is union of u j as j varies only over f do you understand this see notice that i am not writing the standard way yep there is i1 i2 in so that x equal to u i1 union u i2 union u i n usually okay they may not be enumerated it's just a finite set that's all i need learn to think like this if all of your msc students so the moment you say it's a finite set it's not necessary i have to write this in terms of index it by 1 to n okay there is a finite subset f of i so if you like if you don't like there exists i1 i2 i n n i so that x is union u i1 union union u i n that's what it means if you are uncomfortable but if you are going to go for the studies of math models this is where the way you should learn to write so now notice that what is the, the definition this is something very interesting it says if a space is compact if whatever open cover i give i should be able to find this so this cover is called okay therefore this is also cover you understand that this means u j as j is very over up this is also an open cover of x right so we call this a finite sub cover of the given cover open cover u i i running over yeah, i all of i okay so what the compactness there demands is whenever you give me an open cover for the space i should be able to find a finite sub cover you understand that so this is not only what for one cover whatever open cover you give me i should be able to find okay yeah let us look at some examples of compact spaces now okay uh, usual our list well let us look at r with the usual topology uh, we, we already know r is not compact how do i know that because we already looked at the collection u n which is equal to sorry minus n to plus n the open interval okay this is an open cover right and this does not admit let me write it this does not admit a finite sub cover or this has no finite sub cover these are the standard ways when you usually formulate the sentences has no finite sub cover that's very easy why suppose there is a finite subset f of capital n okay of course this cannot be empty right therefore this is, therefore let n to be the maximum of 
okay k in here okay so this is a finite subset therefore maximum exists now notice that for every k in here so let us see sorry let me look at this thing suppose uh, suppose not then there exists a finite subset f of n said that u n or u k as k varies over f is a finite subcode right therefore let n equal to maximum of k as k varies over f okay I, this is finite because f is finite now let's look at for any k in f what is the relation between u k this is minus k to plus k and u n that is minus capital n to plus n this is containment uh, do you understand this yeah right because uk will be like this minus k to plus k and this will be un to my this is un right okay therefore union uk k in capital f is nothing other than un do all of you agree with that and you are saying this is a finite subcode therefore this is equal to r that means r is minus n to plus n therefore this but if i take n plus one that's a real number that doesn't lie here so a contradiction and it's actually an absurdity therefore what is the conclusion r is not compact because to prove it's not compact remember to prove something is compact what i have to do I have to do a lot of work. That is, you give your if you give me any open cover, I have to extract a finite subcover. But to show x is not compact is very easy, right? It looks like that. What is that? I only have to produce, yeah, an open cover. But then I have to do a lot of things. Give me any finite subcover, I have to say it's not equal to all of. It's not equal to x. It's not a finite subcover. Any finite subset, the corresponding set is not an open cover. Am I confusing? So to show x is not compact, okay. What do I have to show? Is there exists an open cover? Say u i, i n i of x, so that given any finite subset f of i the u j j in f is not an open cover do you understand see because try to learn to think like this this is because i always find many students learn by heart so their logical thing ability is diminished okay okay please learn that okay right so that is what i have done so now i produce an open cover and you give me any finite subset f i showed that cannot be an open cover the corresponding collection of open sets will not be a finite open cover that's all i show okay now let's look at some more example okay suppose i have x tau and tau is discrete right i want to know that this is compact this is compact now what are the simplest open sets in x we all know right simplest open sets are x therefore i can take this collection ux to be singleton x itself and let's look at this open cover ux as x varies over capital x what is this this is nothing other than singleton x as x varies over capital x this is an open cover right now suppose there exists suppose there is a finite set capital f of the indexing set what is the indexing set now my i is equal to x therefore finite subset of capital x so that 
my x okay the collection ux has x varies or f is a finite subcover suppose it happened right then what happened that means my x is union of singleton x as x over capital f that is same as f which is finite so what do you think i have shown I have shown that if X is a discrete space and if I assume it is compact okay then X must be finite right so what you have shown is if a discrete space is compact then X is finite how did I show that because I have an obvious open cover in a discrete space, namely consisting of singletons. Right? From this cover, I have to extract a finite subcover. That means only a finite subset I take that's the that union will be all of capital X. That means X itself is finite, yeah. Suppose X is infinite. Okay. Then it's very clear again. Then yeah, yeah, X tau discrete is not compact the same proof shows because again you look at ux equal to singleton x and this collection ux as x varies so this is an open cover right therefore if there exists a finite subcover and ux x and f is a finite subcover then x is yep that means x is finite a contradiction so what you have shown is the following so final conclusion is a discrete space is compact if and only if let's say x is finite As I said, it must be finite. Right? Now, what is the next example I should think of? In discrete space, right? So, let x stop. This is in discrete. Then, what are the open sets? empty set and x therefore I want an open cover what does it mean if ui i in i is an open cover of x then x is union ui right yeah so fix yep P in capital X then P is in X that means there is an I in I said that P belong to UI right that's the definition of union see this is many students may not be able to write a very rigorous proof okay intuition will say that but I'm going to rigorous proof if suppose this is an open cover but of course you will say UI must be either empty or X etc and hence something something but let us learn how to write a precise proof okay fix a point p in x then p belong to x therefore p has to be in ui for some i right now ui is an open set and it's not empty therefore in particular ui is not empty but ui is a non-empty open set in a discrete space that means ui must be all of x okay let me call it a j therefore uj must be all of x because in discrete right yeah now that's good enough so i am going to take let f the finite subs because it be singleton j therefore what will be my uj is single this is x okay therefore this uj this j in f 
which has only one element is a finite subcover. Therefore, my x is u j itself. Therefore, any indiscrete space is compact. Okay, even those of you are very good learn, but I found it even very good students have problem in writing a rigorous proof of this. It's just intuition that u i must be either empty or x. Therefore, therefore something. Okay, the trick is to write a rigorous proof. What did I assume? Fix up p and look for a u i which contains p. That that the u i must be all of x. Okay, very good. So we have defined compactness and looked at some examples. In the next session, we will continue with a lot more examples like a co-code double topology, co-finite topology, VAP topology, outcast topology, lower limit topology, order topology, etc. And investigate whether the space are compact or not compact. Okay, stay tuned. We will meet again. Thank you.